How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech and also to my look at the brand new ASUS Prime Z790A Wi-Fi board. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, Z690, Z790. If I make a mistake, please forgive me. But anyway, this is perfect timing for the new 13th generation Raptor Lake CPUs from Intel being released relatively soon. But before that, we can actually take a look at some of the motherboards for those CPUs. So again, the Z790 A Prime board. <laughs> now, this is only going to be an unboxing because again, we don't have the CPUs. If you see this one, this is a 12th generation, so it's not the new new ones but we're gonna do unboxing see all the new designs and so on and, and see if it's actually a motherboard that would actually fit your needs but anyway let's take a look at what what you get inside the box along with the motherboard first so we have a motherboard there and then in here we have our wi-fi and antennas now some of the boards of the more affordable boards do not have built-in wi-fi so just be mindful of that but I'm put that to the size to have your manual of all of your instructions always handy to have a motherboard manual you have your cd with all of your drivers on not that i believe any pc have has a, a cd driver or dvd drive anymore you have a little pamphlet here for your web storage you have your standoffs up for your m.2s you have some rubber pads there you have some additional rubber pads you have two sata cables and then also your g connector here as a well so not a lot inside the box necessarily but it's all that you really need all right now let's get the board out here move that to the side then here we go so here we have the Prime Z790 board. Now, pricing-wise, I don't have the exact pricing yet, but the previous Z690A Prime is currently retailing for here in South Africa for 5,500 Rand, or in the US at around $270 currently on special, but before that, it costs $300. So this board might cost just above $300, or around 6,000 Rand for here in South Africa. So still not too bad for a high end the z690 boards but also more on the, the affordable side for those as well but just before we get into all of the goodness of the board i have a question for you guys are you actually planning to upgrade to the new z790 platform and the new uh, intel 12th generation uh, 13th generation cpus or you're planning just to stick with your current uh, setup or what's your plans possibly for something else but anyway uh, let me know down in the comments below because i'm quite curious to hear what you guys are planning to do but uh, anyway firstly let's take a look at uh, the design of the board and i have to say this is actually my first time reviewing an a asus a prime a board i do own one but this is way 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 back but this is definitely one of the newer designs that i've actually taken a look at and i do actually quite like it it does have more of this again this space design going on more futuristic and it looks a uh, pretty cool in my honest opinion i actually quite like it now i would have liked it if it was a was a bit more on the sides, more of the white, but otherwise, uh, again, it's more of a budget range board. So, honestly, not too much to complain about the design going on here. You, now, it does look very similar to the previous Z690 A board. The only difference is the chipset design here being slightly different. You do have an extra M.2 heat spreader down here, and then also the IO cover here. Uh, heat spreader does look slightly different there, but that's the main uh, physical differences between the two boards and of course some other ones as well but we'll get into that now then moving on towards our cpu socket here because again this is the newish lga 1700 socket which it does support now both a 12th generation and also 13th generation raptor lake cpus so if you want to pair it up with your 12700k or something like that you will be able to do that as well as actually fitting your previous z690 board a prime with a 13th generation cpu once those are also out but of course you will lose some of the features of the new z790 platform so just keep that in mind now like i mentioned in the beginning this is only a unboxing video no benchmarks or anything like that because again we don't have a cpu yet but uh, from all of the leaks that we have seen again take it with a grain of salt it does look 
pretty good the new 13th generation CPUs. Uh, I was blown away by the performance increase from the 11th to the 12th generation and again it does look to be the same case here with some of the leaked benchmarks showing a performance increase from around like 10 to 50 percent depending on uh, the application and also single core versus multi-core and also that's mostly the high-end CPU so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they actually perform. But again, that is it for the CPU. Now for our VRM setup here, we do have a 16 plus a one phase a DRM MOS VRM setup, which is a pretty beefy. And honestly, all you really need for majority of the CPUs for a slight overclock. I'm not sure how it's going to perform with the, let's say the 13900K, something like that. But for a 13700K, that's going to be fine and even for the 13900k if you want to do slight overclocking there as well i haven't really seen any issues with the previous generations even when running on the i9s on the more budget board so you just won't be able to do any crazy liquid nitrogen overclocking but anyway the heat spirits looks pretty decent enough it's not overly thick or anything like that but again i think it's going to do a decent job at cooling our vrms without it overheating now moving on towards our memory, this board does feature a DDR5 memory, whereas some of the other boards like the P range, the P version, will feature a DDR4 and also some of the other boards as well, some of the tough ranges as well. So it's going to depend up to you if you want to go for DDR4 or DDR5. DDR4 is again much more affordable currently, but DDR5 does deliver a bit performance so you'll just have to see how much you want to spend and also just a shout out to kingston for supplying me with their fury rgb memory dr5 kit it's a 5600 megahertz kit so plenty performance so that's what we're going to use once i actually have a cpu and i'll be able to actually test our system so big shout out to kingston there as well now getting back to our memory so it does have again four demo slots dual channel with which does support up to 128 gigs at 7000 megahertz uh, so that is a bit faster than our 5600 but that's still a fine you're gonna pay <laughs> pay quite a lot for 7000 megahertz so just keep that in mind as well but that's plenty enough now if you want to see more of these motherboard videos subscribe because i got a couple more coming soon on this channel and then also my main channel linked below so definitely check that out now moving on towards our pci express slots here with the new z790 range uh, they did reduce the pci express three lanes from a 16 to 8 but don't worry because it also increased a PCI Express of four lanes are from a 12 to 20 but now for this board here the top slot is of course going to be the new PCI Express Gen 5 16x slot so once we actually have more devices that actually use PCI Express Gen 5 uh, we'll be able to be a more, bit more useful currently it's not really that needed for graphics cards so but it is a uh, nice to have for future proofing. So you do have uh, that one. It does also feature a uses what armor design here to prevent uh, the uh, the PCI Express slot from bending if you do install some of those beefy, beefy graphics cards. So that is also a nice addition. You do also have for the top slot here, their quick... Uh It actually popped open and then you can actually remove it like with the uh, bottom slot here it just kind of like that like the previous designs but this one actually pulls it to the side more which I think is actually a lot more handy and also pushes it back immediately afterwards so I like the new design very very much now for the rest of our PCI Express uh, slots are for the bottom one this is also a 16x slot but it's a PCI Express uh, 4 running at a 4x so not full 16x speed for the middle one here this is also a PCI Express a 4 slot but we're also running only at a 4x so it's also a bit shorter and then the loss to here is PCI Express a 3 1x slot so mostly for add-on cards and, and, and so on once you actually need those then moving on to storage we do have a crazy 
four Peace Express Gen 4 M.2 slots, which we quickly can actually open up here because they do also feature a SUSE's Q latch design, which makes it so much easier to install M.2s. Now I just need to get that last screw out. So I do really love this, but if your motherboard is already installed in your in your case, where and you need to install a new M.2, this makes it so much easier where you don't need to actually to worry about the tiny M.2 screw falling off or getting lost or falling inside your GPU's radiator uh, fins and so on. That actually has happened to me before uh, because they do have that open slot there at the back usually. So you don't, you don't have to worry about uh, that. But again, you do have a four of uh, these, so plenty of uh, Gen 4 speed uh, possibilities, uh, storage options are for you there. Now also you do have uh, four uh, SATA 3 uh, connections, two of them down here and two of them being a uh, 90 degrees here on the side as well. Now just before we continue with the rest of the video, if you have a product you would like me to feature uh, either in a video review, a comparison, a PC build, then all you need to do is uh, tag me and the brand in a tweet so that I can see if I can actually get that arranged for you. Now then, moving on towards our I.O. here at the back, uh, it is pretty limited but it's everything that you would really need. Again, this is my first time actually reviewing a Prime board, so it is a bit less compared to the uh, high-end ROG boards, which uh, I'm used to actually reviewing. But uh, anyways, for the top here, we do have our display port, I believe version 1.4, and then also our HDMI 2.0 port. You do also have a Ford USB 3.2 Gen 1 type A ports, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two of them being a type A and also one of them being a type C and then also a, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 20 gigabits per second type C port over there. Next you have your 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and then also you do have your Wi-Fi 6E along with Bluetooth 5.3 and then finally your audio connections. But interestingly enough no SPDIF out port but honestly that's not too big of a deal for me, but uh, possibly for other people. Now then, moving on towards the honor board connections. Here we do have our dual 8-pin CPU power, so that's going to supply plenty enough power if you want to go for the i9. I know these new CPUs are pretty power hungry, so that's probably going to be needed if you want to go high end there. Next up, you do have your standard 24-pin motherboard power. You do have your power switch at the bottom here. You do have your QLED codes up here as a well then you do also have your clear cmos button down here as a well now for our usb headers you do have your usb 3.2 gen 1 type a header on the side here and also your 3.2 gen 2 type c header and at the bottom of course your dual usb 2 headers as a well now if it's needed you do also have a thunderbolt header down here as a well which i personally do like because i do have a thunderbolt devices now, I want to use but unfortunately it's not on the IO back here but that's still handy if you actually want to use that. Now then for RGB you do have a three 5 volt addressable RGB headers two of them down here and one at the top here along with a another 12 volt RGB header. And then finally, you do have a seven PWM fan headers all around the side and also up there as a, in the middle as a well. So plenty of a fan connections for you. So then that's pretty much it for my look at the, the Asus Prime Z790A motherboard. Now again, there's plenty of other options that you can go for. You can go for the top versions, you can go for the other Prime versions as well, like the, the P version, and it, I believe there's an M version as well, and so on. So there's plenty of different options that you can go for, depending on your needs and also your price points. So I will leave a link in the video description for a bit more options for you guys, depending on your price point and so on. Once, of course, that are actually available <laughs> but uh, anyway if you guys have any questions leave me a comment down below but the best way is either to uh, tweet at me or join the discord server link below as well where i or somebody else there will be able to help you uh probably just not <laughs> with relationship advice but anything else will will be able to sort you out there but anyway a big shout out to asus of africa for sending over this board and potentially some other ones as well which will come out maybe uh, a big shout out to them 
them but anyway again i will leave all of the links in the video description if you want to get this board or some of the other ones for yourself but anyway thanks for watching guys if you did enjoy this video please like share subscribe and comment like always i messed it up there and i'll check all of you guys next time cheers guys